Okay, I don't think this thing worked out. I had set up, we, we had really started this from the, uh, I say that from the making of right right from the beginning. Anyway, I'm up to this part here. I'm doing some chlorophyll, uh, chlorofresh. It's liquid, well, it's liquid chlorophyll. I only do it when I'm down here in uh, Virginia, it seems like. It's the only time I buy it, really. I guess, or if I'm in St. Louis or something, something like that, I guess I would do it there too, but I don't do it in, uh, I don't do it in Africa. I don't actually do it in New York either. Well, I could. Chlorophyll. <sighs> yum, yum. And of course, I have my, uh, this is a fasting day for me. No eating the whole day. Technically, if I wanted a 24 hour fast, I could break it at, at night. I could break it at night, but um, usually I go to the next, you know, midday. So basically, I do uh, a 36 hour fast every week on, on Monday, well, Sunday nights and Monday. <sighs> My hands are wet now. Nothing like bring you back to your childhood using your teeth. Whoops. Hey. Or some uh, coconut water. Because that's how we drink. I've been, I've been doing coconut water all day. Well, not a lot. But I mean, uh, water. Because I can't eat my water because that's my, my fruit. I do my fruit in the morning. Well, you know, midday. And that's my that's the water. It's my water, water allocation, you know. It's my whatever ounces of water you're supposed to get a day. That's what I, that's what I do it. Now see, this takes more like my coconut water. This is called, I got this from, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Lion, uh, the, the Lion store <laughs> down here. Uh, and it's like, you know, coconut water. That's the 1% sugar, that's all it says in there, you know? One sip and you will understand what we mean by live, live rejuvenated. Live, reju live rejuvenated, live rejuvenated. Chill before serving. I did chill this actually. Put back in the refrigerator. Okay, so so I'll be drinking this most of the day. I have like two two or three more. Maybe I I like it, so you know. Uh, but let's get on what we what, what we're gonna be doing. Today we're going to for our Instagram. As you know, this is the behind the scenes, how I do the Instagram. It's sort of like a, how do you say, it? it's like a, it's behind the scenes, you know, it's what I do every day, you know. See, because what happens is the Instagram goes up on Instagram, right? But this here, this goes up on my YouTube channel, which automatically is uh, my, my, my uh, BitChute channel takes, well, my well, BitChute channel takes. So I have two places for archival purposes, which is what I do. I, this, is, this is for archival purposes. This is not... You know, trying to get some likes and and a lot of numbers or whatever. This is for like people 200 years from now, and they really want to know uh, this perspective. Then they have this perspective, right? Otherwise, they'd be taking a perspective of the people that they have the big newspapers and and they're spending billions of dollars to influence you to tell you what to do and all that sort of stuff. No, no, no. This is just this is just the reality as I, me, that would be me, T from the Pattersons taking the trains to bed. Season. Okay. Um, am I ready? Okay, you'll see what it is. You'll see what it is. Okay. Oops. Got my VA reading glasses. So I'll start this one. Okay. Hey. Uh, I had a good walk this morning, by the way. Yeah, I think uh, it's like two hours. But I started, I started with uh, Nina Simone. I keep on forgetting what's the first one I heard from Nina. Well, I know what to do. We we, we, we can look it up. I think I'm feeling good. But what was that? What was that from Nina Simone that I, that I, that I was wrong with? Let me go here. 
I like looking this stuff up. Hey, my Giants won last night. Well, I'll just say my Giants. This is the... Oh, don't let me be misunderstood, Nina. But the Giants winning uh, yesterday. Was it just, I always got to check on them. For pretty. Okay, look. I'm, I'm a Giants fan by, by default. You see, because my first job when I was 16 years old, so the league, you can, in New York, legally, you have to be 16 before you got a job. It's not your first job. It's the first job, you know, you, you know, taxes or whatever it is, I guess. Anyway, uh, was uh, selling hot chocolate at, at the Giants game that were played at Yankee Stadium. Because, you know, I live close to Yankee well, close enough to Yankee Stadium. Like, Yankee Stadium, 161st Street, I was on 141st Street, so I can go to work, right? Walk. Walks work. Um, anyway, um, and so my first job was selling hot chocolate at the Giants game because the Giants was in Yankee Stadium, okay, because they didn't have a stadium of their own. They had just, I think the Polo Grounds, which was over in the, uh, it's close by, you know, it used to be have a railroad spur that went to the Polo Grounds from like a, from 67th Street to Polo Grounds, right up, 161st Street is Yankee Stadium, you get off there, but then you go to another stop and you, there was this little spur train right up that, but they, that was a long time ago. You, you wouldn't know nothing about that. Polo Ground. I, I, you know, Polo Ground is one of those projects, like, like I Chicago had the same thing, where you could, you, the project was right there, and you could look and see the game, you know, from, if you were in the right project apartment. Back in the day. We're talking about the day day. Way day day. <laughs> anyway, so this is like 1966 or so, that's, that's when I, I, I was, uh, uh, became a Giants fan. Of course, that's, that's when I, it's my first job. So I haven't finished it. You know, interestingly enough, my first, um, which maybe the year before, 65, uh, I bought my first, the, the first ticket I bought with my own money to a baseball game was Shea Stadium when it was just built, you know, for the World's Fair, whatever. Shea Stadium, when it was 65, 66, whatever. That team was there, you know, one with Chichu Coleman, but they'd be missing from the outfield. So the Mets became my team, right? And lo and behold, 1969, the Miracle Mets. Ain't that interesting? Uh, but I digress. Let me get, let me get, let me get back to what I was doing here. Uh, so I played in New Simone. Don't, don't let me be misunderstood. Oh, then I, then I had uh, Marvin with the, the, I guess it's Dave Morales did a remix. Right? Uh, I want you. Heard that. Then, um, then Valerie Simpson, uh, love woke me up this morning. And bad. oh, then I did uh because I was walking by then. I was in. I, I started in Blue Light, Blue Light. I got it now. You know, Blue Light, the Blue Hour. It's not an hour. It's only like twenty minutes, really. But the Blue Hour. I call it the first light. So I, I like to say first light. I don't know. Forget this Blue Light business. So first light. Uh, I, I was walking and I played. Uh, Love that will be done. But the mix that they have with. Uh, he wrote it for this 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 this. Uh, I, I think he's called a Spanish singer. It's a native language, right? Her first, her, her first tongue, her first language is Spanish. America, something like that. Anyway, he wrote that song for her. She recorded, and somebody did a mix of him and her. You know, did a really good mix. So I got that. So sometimes I listen, and I listen to that. I like that. Love that will be done. One of my favorite songs on the planet. Uh, and then I did, did then I walked, and I uh, oh, I listen to DJ Spivey most of the time. I forgot which one it was. Which, which DJ Spivey did I listen to? Uh, Back to back, actually. Uh, I listen to oh, uh, Beyond Measure, which is uh, basically an hour and twenty minutes, and then I went to went straight to uh, a reprise. These both were gospel house mixes, and this was the reprise was fifty seven minutes, so it's like like an hour. So basically, about two hours are more than two hours, but you know, about two hours. Okay, now let's get to what we're supposed to be doing here. Ready? I'm going to go live, get my Bronx on, get my Bronx on this morning, or even though Instagram will be backwards, what can we say? Hey, Instagram, it's me, T. From the Pattersons, taking the train to the bit. Hey, I got my reading glasses on. Thank goodness for the Veterans Administration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank. Well, you thank me for my service, and I thank you for, you know, having a Veterans Administration. 
Um, I got my reading glasses on because I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to I'm I'm read a book I had for a while. It's, 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 it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Five, oh, five novels by Virginia Hamilton. You know, I got it from the, what do you call that? The, what do you call the people? Uh, Library of America. I got a big, man, I buy books from Library of America, like that. Hey, Brother Cohen. Salute. Claire Coy, you know. Uh, so five novels, uh, Zeely, uh, The House of, The House of Dyes, Dyes Deer, the, uh, the Planet of Junior Brown, M.C. Higgins, The Great, Sweet Whispers, Brother Rush. <coughs> oh, sounds really good. I never, I don't know, I didn't, I never knew about Virginia Hampton. I just said, well, let me let, let me check this out. So the book, so these are books. These are novels from her. And see the, see because it's Library of America, you know, it's small. So that's why I need my reading. I need reading glasses. Well, so anyway, but I'm going to read. I I, I I'm going to read the novel. The one, two, the third one I have listed here. Naturally, trees. Uh, the Planet of Junior Brown. And this was, when was this written? This was, this came out in 1971. Oh, okay, so she wrote from the 60s into the 80s. I don't know, I gotta better look her up. Maybe she's still, no, I think that, I think all of the people that, that are in the Library of America, I think they have to be deceased or something like that. Hey, let me not, let me not put no vibes out there just in case the sister is alive. Uh, I think there's some pictures. I don't know what these pictures are. The first, oh, the, oh, the first edition of Zili. Oh, Zili. But well, when I when I read Zili, I, I, I'll expose you to Zili. Other than that, let me let me leave this stuff alone. Okay, so that's what that's gonna be. But I want to talk about about uh, uh, you know because I gotta I gotta exercise my brain you know whatever. When you look at social media for some someone and you see patterns and see for instance, people do the same thing. They have the same issues, and you can almost just read the headlines. That's why people got into reading headlines and know what the next, you know, twenty, the next two-hour rant is going to be about. So sometimes, I, well, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I have to take time to do my, my reading. So I took a, uh, a Monday Monday bath, you know, with some salts, because you know, working out uh, some salts. And uh, on Mondays, it's a day when I fast and I just drink water, and I'm going to drink uh, coconut water, kashiwati drink coconut water uh, only today, all day. I'll break my fast tomorrow about, you know, midday when I do the, uh, uh, when I eat my water. So, you know, from water to water. That's what it is. Okay. So, so, so this is going to be interesting. Virginia Hamilton, I never knew about her. Don't know anything about her. Uh, Julie Rubini is the editor. So, that's what the sisters are. Well, maybe I should read something. They say, uh, playing on themes of memory, folklore, and tradition in ex ex exalting in exalting often wildly inventive stories, Virginia Hamilton transforms American children's literature in her award-winning novels of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. She brought black characters center stage, creating a multifaceted portrait of African American life that she called uh, liberation lit li oh liberation literature oh this volume collects five of her best known and most beloved works liberation literature how come I never heard of her and she uses terms like liberation lit li literation literature but you know oh she died in 2002 Virginia Hamilton was the author of 41 works of fiction and nonfiction she was the first black writer awarded the Newbery Medal and the first children's writer to be named a MacArthur Fellow. And the first children's writer to be named out of all the, hey, not just blacks. She, she, well, you know, you don't talk about The Genius Grant. She also received the National Book Award and the Hans Christian Andersen Medal. Okay. There you go. Oh, hey, that's that's good, man. How come I never heard of this? is my time period. This is, I should, I, 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 man, I've been lacking. I don't know what I've been doing. I've been, I've been lacking, serious lacking, you know. 
So, so I'm, I'm not slacking anymore. I've got to catch up. People's I didn't know. And uh, so, anyway, so what else I was going to tell you? Oh, oh. So the exercise your brain, right? But I walk every morning, right? But even in the walking, what I do, because I have, I got um, just problems with my lower back, you know, uh, well, I had my spinal cord injury up here. So it was a lower back thing. So I got to work things out. But what I do, what I've started to do, which is, which is I've been doing this for a long time, actually for years, uh, I'll, uh, I walk backwards, but now I'm walking at a different, uh, uh, longer stretches, you know, because because where I walk, I have these paths that are just clear and nobody's on them. I mean, uh, well, I walk in the cemetery, that's why I'm clear. Uh, and then I have other places I walk. I can walk backwards for a long thing. But it's interesting because in walking backwards, you're, you're working some, some other muscles, you know? So so that's what I'm saying. This is this 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 is the task of evolutionary. See, I consider myself in, in, in the realm of human beings an evolutionary. I'm on a, I'm on an evolutionary trajectory. Oh, the brother said some big words. Put them together. Wow. Uh, anyway, so that 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 that. So every time I'm doing something, I try to make it better or different the next the next time. So now even just walking backwards, the way the way I walk, you know, it it it, it, it does the posture and everything like that. But look, let me put it this way: Jeff Corm's in in, 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 in in the house. You know, okay. Here's the thing, right? He knows when we when we we, we were in the cadet corps, like a paramilitary organization, that, you know, like that, that they haven't used to have a lot of inner cities, right? But you know, back then, you know, we could we when our dress uniform, we also the officers, house officer also, you know, you go you go from a cadet and you work your way with it, yeah, work your way, you you advance, you keep on learning, 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 and then you share with the people that come behind. That's the whole idea. The only problem is that when you get to be 21 or so, whatever it is, then it's like you're gone and there's nothing to do. After that, with Jerry Donaldson, actually, he, he had an idea to do that, but Je but uh, Virgie wouldn't go for it. I don't know what to do. It's something. Look, I'm talking inside stuff. Forget that part. But the point is, you know, they have stuff for children. You know, I mean, up to a certain 21, 18, 21, and then it's like you on your own, right? So this, but this part of work I'm doing in Africa, there's this a whole other group from, you know, and yeah, we deal with the 13 year olds, yeah, but we're going beyond, beyond that, you know, like that. And uh, okay, so so that's one of the things we're doing. Okay, uh, what was I saying? Okay, so 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 when we, we grew up in the Connect Court, you know, you we, we could carry sabers, <laughs> sabers. You know, obviously, you have sabers. You have the rifle people doing, the, you know, whatever, the stock rifle, the, 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 all that spinning and, and whatever have you. You know, I think that uh, I wonder if Colin Powell was ever in the Persian rifles. I think he went to City College when he went to his ROTC. I wonder if he ever made the Persian rifles. Ask Colin Powell if he ever made the Persian rifles. He'll know what we're talking about. It's a precision drill, drill team, you know. Anyway. Um, um, and, and so, you know, you can carry sabers. Can't carry, I just think if you have a cadet unit that, that, that dudes be carrying sabers now, I don't know, I don't think it would go, would go too well. Uh, so, so back, so, so I learned to march, you know, from an early age, from like eight, Nine years old, you know, we learned how to march. So when I went to the military, it was like, nah, that's a joke. Now, now I was going to say it that way, but you know. So you, you, you learn discipline, blah, blah, on another level, and a bunch of things like that. But, um, but, the, but, 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 and when you march, just like you hear in the movies, well, you used to hear, right? Uh, stomach in, chest out, right? Like that. I was just thinking about this the other day, right? And, and, but I was listening to something on, you know, on social media, on YouTube or something like that. Um, or probably Instagram, and the, guy, the guys are saying, well, you know, you have to, to improve your posture just to always remember to keep your nipples straight like that. Now, see, here's the thing. Here's what I was thinking. This is what good. You know, if not everybody has nipples. You could do that like that. But if you apply that, if you say that if you're in the military, you say, okay, okay, chest in, nipples up, right? Eh, it don't sound too well. <laughs> not chest in, I mean, stomach in, nipples up. It don't sound too well, right? Well, that's because the religious people got got a hold on us, you know. They, you know, every every everything they can make taboo, <laughs> they make taboo. Anything, especially with the body, they make taboo. So anyway, but I just sound good. just sound better. Stomach getting chest out, just sound better. But you know, to improve your posture. But even in that, so it's what I'm trying to say. The backwards walking, you know, I got to make sure that you know my chest is up like that, and you feel you feel the different muscles, different kinds of muscles working. I think it's helpful. I, oh, as I said, especially when the pandemic began and, and people were, were freaking out and they would run into the pharmaceuticals and, and, and the hospital and all that. 
I said, no, no, no. They kept on trying to. I said, no, no, no. I, I, I ain't going to. Look, I'm my own petri dish. So this, this this experiment I have a walking backwards, that's me being my own petri dish. And you should be your own petri dish, too. Just to let you all know that. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you later. Be well. Okay. Uh, share. So now, I go. That's the other thing. When you when you get hungry, you know, I drink water. You know, and and well, I ha I have this other phrase that I use. I mean, what am I gonna use? What am I gonna write here? Um, I'm gonna write. Uh, um, Walking, what the people walking backwards? Walking. I shouldn't say backwards. That's gonna kind of say walking differently. Walking differently. D I F F E R E N T. Walking differently. I'm gonna put it that way. That way, you know, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. Walking backwards is not negative, or maybe it is negative, you know. But it leads people to think about certain things, you know what I mean? Just like I was saying in the thing, people just read the headlines now. That's what they go by. You know? uh, location, Western Branch, answer series. Uh, I'm going to put the, in the morning. Done. Share. Okay. So that's going up. So see, that'll go up, right? And um, then this here that we're doing, the making of, this will go up on YouTube, right? But then uh, BitChute would, would grab it right away. So I'll write something. Uh, when I'm sharing it, I'll get stuff for you guys. I'm sharing when I'm sharing. Let me, oh, I got to check. Finishing up, okay. There it is. It's 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 there on Instagram. So I just leave it like that. Whoever grabs it, grabs it right. And then I wait. When I, I put this up on YouTube, by the way, then BitChute will grab it. When when I put it up on BitChute, I will take the BitChute URL and post that URL into the comments of this uh, of uh, of the Instagram. And that way. See, it doesn't make any sense to you, but it makes sense to me, right? I'm giving uh, BitChute some pub, if you want to put it that way, whatever little pub. Since, since my stuff is not monetized and it's not, uh, it's in Creative Commons, you know, and I don't get a lot of traffic, then yeah, I don't, my, my publicity is not, is not as valuable <laughs> as other people's publicity, let's put it that way. And in terms of publicity goal, but as far as knowledge and everything like that, hey, I'm looking at people like, 100, 300, 900, 2,000 years from now, looking and trying to find out what really happened, you know, in the world, in this in, in this epoch, right? Listen to the brother use a big word epoch. Oh, he probably don't even know what it means. Why do they do that, man? Yes, they do that. So people don't understand. Look, in these times, in the, in the times that we live in, right? So that's 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 what. That's what I use my YouTube channel for, also for interviewing people. And I haven't interviewed some people in a long time, but I'll find some people to interview. We'll see what happens. But I'll, I'll go back up to New York and see what happens. All right? Okay. So that's it, that's it for me. T from the Patterson, Second Change to Bed, let you know what I only suspect.